uh, you know, it started to dawn on me that, that I actually did have a lot of preferences in terms of the way I wished it would go and, uh, and some anger and resentment at those people that I feel were blocking that, that weren't joining in that, that were actively resisting that, or that even were apathetic and uh, didn't care. Uh, I was a bit resentful of all of those types of people. The more I followed the Course and the teachings, I went into deeper and deeper states of mind, of, of awareness, and I found that instead of anything being ripped away, it was more like that the Holy Spirit was using the ego preferences that I still was holding on to in a way of a loosening pattern, almost like they were all wound very tight, like winding up one of those tops that's just tightly wound in a tight spring. And the Spirit was not saying to me, well, you're wrong, because you've got these preferences. The Spirit was saying, well, give them over to me, and fulfill my purpose, and I will use even the egoic preferences in a way that will be like little presents or little symbols of thank you. So, um, for example, if I'd be traveling around to different countries and I had a preference for ice cream, uh, I would be in South America and I'd be down there, or the Canary Islands and something, and they'd say, people just love you so much, they want, they want to feed you, they want to buy you gifts, or they want to have you over to their house and meet the whole family and take pictures and all this and that. They would say things like, uh, halados is, uh, in Spanish is ice cream. You're like, halados? Halados? And I'd say, yes. And then, oh my. It would just come <laughs> from every direction. Halados, halados. Davis likes halados. And so, you know, and then, but you know, it was, I wasn't hard on myself. I would be like, okay, uh, how sweet. Uh, that's very nice. Sweet in a couple of different ways. <laughs> how sweet emotionally, but also was, was tasty. And then um, I would travel with someone who really liked water, and we would just seem to get invitations to islands, to coastal regions, with swimming pools, and it was water everywhere. I mean, it wasn't anything to, to push away, it was just like, like a gentle symbol of the Spirit saying, thank you for sharing these beautiful ideas. Thank you for smiling and laughing and hugging and dancing and sharing the joy of the kingdom. And even in the Bible it said, all things else will be added unto you when you seek first the kingdom of heaven. So to me, that's, that's a real key point with the preferences, is the sense that I, I can say honestly that what happened was they just started to fade and fade in my awareness. Whereas before they were prominent, they started to get like further and further on the outskirts so that I would barely think of them, or only occasionally to come in. And I think the woman who wrote to me this morning was saying that her life felt a little bit flat. She was kind of going through one of those um, phases where she said some of the things that were so important to me before, I seemed to be disinterested in. And yet there was still a bit of a judgment, like, like, I don't like this feeling. It feels very different from the me that I was accustomed to and familiar with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I'm glad you raised that up because that's, that's how I, I go through my life. Um, I was trained a bit in this at the very beginning, like in 1991, when I was impelled to start traveling. Um, I did get a few instructions, just like in the course, in the workbook, we really had two instructions, you know, not doing more than one lesson a day and, and trying not to make any exceptions, you know, as where possible, whenever possible. And one of the instructions that I received from Jesus at the beginning of my travels was, he said, eat whatever is served. And that turned out to be a, a, 
I guess you could say a mechanism for flushing up a lot of preferences. Uh, <laughs> sleeping preferences, um, food preferences, climate preferences, uh, just in terms of people that I would like to hang around, you know, friend preferences. I was on the road and I was on the move day after day and those preferences got flushed up right in my face, like in my nose on a daily basis. And I could either hang in and cling to those preferences and feel miserable, just, just absolutely miserable, or I could start to loosen the grip a bit and just say, show me. I do not know how uh, this is going to go. I like to sleep on a certain kind of uh, mattress, you know, not, not really firm. So it is the spirit that had me sleeping on the floor or, you know, I mean, I would get those kind of things that would flush those up into awareness. Um, all the way across the board, even to um, sexual preferences. Uh, uh, I remember one time, this, this wasn't so much sexual preferences, but it was, I went down to Colombia, and I had been down to, to Colombia a number of times to teach, and people were always gracious, there was a standing ovation at the airport uh, twice when I landed there, and I thought there was some famous ex-Beatle or something, McCartney or something around it, so I wasn't used to uh, standing ovations. And actually, this one time I went down there, and I, two people picked me up that I had met the previous year, and they just said, oh, we've made arrangements for where you'll stay and who you'll be staying with. And they had many gatherings planned for me, you know, full schedule, days of gatherings. And then they, they took me to this house, they took me upstairs to this room, it was a king-size bed, and I was up there, unpacked my suitcase, got set, went off to my first day of gatherings. Um, I came home the next day, and I, or that night, I, I went upstairs and I was up there getting ready to go to sleep. And then this beautiful Colombian woman walked in and she said, Are you enjoying your stay? And I said, Yes, very much. And she said, Thank you, this is, this is my house. And these friends had put me up at, at their friend's house, not telling me. So she said, So I'm, I'm going to be staying here in the room. And she just, got into bed and talked about all of her, the new boyfriend she'd met, just <laughs> spilled the beans, just talked and talked and talked and talked. She says, am I boring you? I said, no, that's fine. She just kind of went on and talked and this and this, and she just smiled, she looked at me, and she says, I don't bite. I said, oh, okay, that's good. So, you know, then the next day I remember getting up, going off to do more gatherings and everything, and I came home and, uh, she wasn't there, but her cat was there, so then I had a cat as a companion. Then I went the next day, was gone the whole day, came home, and I was just coming into her living room and I could see that this, this boyfriend that she had, that she was describing, it looked a little bit like Yanni, you know, the, the, the piano player, produced with the long hair, there he was. And I thought, oh boy, this is getting more interesting <laughs> by the minute. It was like 10.30 at night, I'd been doing gatherings all day, and she said, my boyfriend wants to talk to you about some things that we're working through and this and that, so I'll spend another half an hour there. And finally she said, my boyfriend and I are going to sleep up in the bed tonight. And I said, okay, okay. She said, so I'm going to find a place for you. And she found a, a closet for me to sleep in <laughs> that night. She put a mattress in a closet. But this, this is what I mean by, you know, when you're there, really showing up to just share and extend, of course, as you're going through the mind training, those preferences are going to rise into awareness. That's actually what the mind training is for. Because this is an unconscious belief system, and because it's unconscious, we aren't even <coughs> consciously aware of what some of these beliefs are. For example, we may have a, a diet that we've eaten ever since we were little kids, and we don't really realize that that diet is part of a belief system until we take a trip or until someone from another country comes to visit or something. And suddenly, like they say in quantum physics, there's something that, that bumps up against our little bubble. And we go, hey, what's this?